Welcome back. It's Latuna Buzz Lightbeer, and we've got a bag chocked full of Starfield bits to go over today. As AMD is back with some interesting requirements, we've got a discussion on a few mod rumors and updates, and I also wanted to touch on yesterday's failed Starfield upload. So let's get started. First topic for today is yesterday's failed Starfield upload, and in case you missed it, I'll drop a link for you in the video description. I don't know what happened. It didn't work out the way I had intended it to. I mean, I feel pretty confident that the message was on point, and what looked good for me on paper, you know, in terms of the video title and combo with the text on the thumbnail, again, I don't know what happened. Maybe it just sounded much better in my head than it translated to. Overall, I've been extremely positive about Starfield, and I'm truly excited about the possibilities this game can offer. And so when I started seeing some of your comments asking why I was acting so down on the game, which I clearly wasn't. Anyways, the title came off as way over the line of clickbait. I'm sorry, that was the exact opposite for what I was going for, and it won't happen again. Okay, into the news, and Todd Howard has already hailed Starfield as a modder's paradise, as the mod tools will be made readily available, and the modding community attached to Bethesda games is truly legendary. Hot on the heels of the AMD exclusive partnership with Starfield announcement, noted Elden Ring and Elder Scrolls modder, Pure Dark, promised DLSS support with the following. I'll manage to get at least DLSS 3 support in the 5 days of early access, then slowly add in an independent DLSS 2 implementation, depending on the situation. One point of modding discussion was triggered when Todd Howard revealed that there would only be 4 romance options contained within the game, and these would be limited to members of Constellation, with two of the characters being identified as Sarah Morgan and Sam Coe. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone Except you. This announcement instantly created a buzz at the limited number of options, but based on what the modding community has been able to produce in past Bethesda games, that deficiency should be sorted out quickly. Fallout 4 saw some incredible additions like Mary Jane, Nick Valentine, Heather Caston, Curie the Robot, and even entirely reworked zones like Grey Garden and the full marriage mod option if you ventured to Diamond City, complete with a wedding registry and chapel. And I would expect these romance options to follow the standard path of advancing through affinity versus the older Skyrim method of jamming an amulet into your desired companion's face. Whatever the case, I don't see this being a problem for very long after the full game's release. Continuing in modding news, and Nexus Mods has previously been confirmed to be back and supporting yet another Bethesda game with a full Discord and modding community forum already in place for Starfield. And one item that I am sure they will be bombarded with are questions as to when a Starfield multiplayer mod will be made available. Now, ever since it was announced that Starfield would be a strict single player experience, players have been asking if multiplayer would ever be added in to no avail. Reddit has been actively engaging in this discussion with user Jojoisa Gogo stating, It'll probably take a good while, but I feel confident we'll get one. If I remember correctly, the people making the Skyrim multiplayer mod said it wouldn't be too hard to make it work on Fallout 4 because of how similar the games are, so maybe it'll be the same with Starfield. The only thing I can see holding it back is the ship flying. Which, to be honest, would be a real letdown, as multiplayer ship versus ship combat would be a key addition to this mod. We've already seen success with adding in multiplayer mods, like the recent mod that was showcased for Hogwarts Legacy called Hogwarp that allowed nearly 200 players to populate a single server. I know that many players really want to see multiplayer in Starfield, me included, even if it were only functional planet side. The ability to raid full bases and some of the other possibilities are really tempting. Let me know where you stand on multiplayer in Starfield. Is it something you want to see modded into the game? And let's finish up today's Starfield news with this recent AMD PC requirements post for Starfield over on the official AMD website. And where this starts to get kind of interesting is when you compare these recent AMD requirements versus the older versions which were previously posted to Steam. 
Now for what AMD is calling the heroic experience, one would assume this is the minimum requirements, AMD is now stating that you should have a Ryzen 5 7600 and an RX 7600 GPU. And then they also throw in a recommended motherboard. And keep that fact in the back of your mind as I now show you the previously posted Steam requirements, which would have been provided by Bethesda, I would assume. And here we see a Ryzen 5 2600X and an RX 5700 GPU. Now, there are several generations difference between the two requirement sets, and along with that motherboard addition has led some to theorize that AMD is attempting to scare potential Starfield PC players into feeling that they need to upgrade their components. Moving over to the Epic experience, which is set for 1440p gaming, and AMD is recommending a Ryzen 7. 7700X comboed with an RX 6800 GPU, and while Steam is a bit closer than those minimum stats, they're coming in with a Ryzen 5 3600X and an RX 6800 XT. So, Steam is now closer to AMD, but still a bit easier on the tier of components. And finally, we can see AMD's official site taking it to the extreme with the legendary 4K experience coming in with a Ryzen 7 7800X3D and an R x 7900 xt card and of course another motherboard featured amd has also announced either free premium edition or standard edition copies of starfield based on whatever new amd components you purchase and as expected the ryzen 9 cpus and higher end video cards will net you those premium editions Let's wrap this one up with some funny info about Starfield, and just in case you missed it, the game has received a bogus review score of 0 out of 10 over on Metacritic. And FYI, games are actually locked prior to the release, but one extremely angry and motivated user managed to compromise Metacritic site's protocols and left us with this gem. Coming to us from, I would assume, bogus username Jopsta360, and they say, Bethesda, because making games that work out of the box is less important than figuring out all the ways to extract as much money from your bank account as possible. Starfield Super Special 76 Edition includes the expected disappointment, comes with a shot glass so you can participate in the recurring internet historian drinking game. Take a shot every time Todd Howard lies. Or don't. You will be dead from alcohol poisoning five minutes into the 20 plus minute masterpiece, highlighting yet another Bethesda disaster piece. Yeah. Anyways, I look forward to reading your feedback. How are you feeling about Starfield? Can September come fast enough for you? Make sure to sound off in the comment section below. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my latest Starfield upload alerts. Likes, comments, and shares are always appreciated. All my social links can be found in the video description. Shout out to the now over 126,000 of you that have taken the leap and hit subscribe. You know I appreciate each and every one of you. And a special thanks goes out to my patrons over on Patreon. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer. Signing off.